Good morning. Good to see you. I was told to get in here and get started, but you know, as you know, I never like starting on time. This is worship at nine-ish, nine-ish, whenever everything just falls into place. So uh, there's still p- people coming in, so that, that's good. Welcome. If you're visiting us for the first time, um, we're delighted to have you here uh, with some friends back again, and uh, we're delighted to have them here as well. Uh, can I ask you to please fill in those connection cards, um, if just to put your name and address and that, 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 that you're here. If you have any prayer requests, put those on, on the back, and you can drop them in the boxes as you leave, uh, where you drop your offering and the, these cards in. That would be, be wonderful. Um, I want to thank you for all the, the cards and messages and gifts uh, that were given on Pastor Appreciation Sunday last week. It, uh, it means means a lot, and uh, thank you. Uh, so appreciative of, of all your your kind thoughts and encouragement. Uh, we have Little Stars Group has started up again, uh, which we're really excited about. Um, it's going to meet every Thursday uh, in the nursery from 9:30 to 11 a.m. So if you have little toddlers who you want to get out and meet with some other adults um, and play in the nursery. Uh, please come come along to that. Um, you just come in by the east door. And um, I said, last Thursday was our first one. We had four kids there, which was great. And it was great to hear um, lots of noise. And Denise is doing a great job with that. So as I say, welcome to worship. We are here because we want, at least I hope we're here, because we want to meet with God. Um, We come into his presence, we come into his house, and we need to settle ourselves, and we need to get rid of all the stuff that's in our heads and our minds, and just to focus on on him, just to focus on what he wants to say to us. So let's just take a moment, let's just bow our heads, and let's start to clear our thoughts our minds, of all that stuff that's in there. And just ask quietly in our own hearts that Jesus will come, that his Holy Spirit will move in our lives. And that this morning we'll be able to worship from our hearts. So welcome to worship. Let's watch our first video. God, God wants nothing more than us to feel relaxed and to feel at home, all right? And it's so important for us as we, we worship God to, to feel that we're in his house, that we're home because we are his children. Um, so we're going to sing our first song. This is Graves in the Gardens. Empty praise 
treasures that fade are never enough. And then you came along, put me back together. And every desire. nothing that God can't do. We limit him so much because of our own thoughts and our own minds. And, and yet he wants to set us free. Uh, all the power that there is and there is in life comes from Jesus, comes from his Holy Spirit. Um, this song is from a group called Rain Collective from Northern Ireland. And uh, love singing their stuff because it reminds me of home and uh, they're great guys. This is called Your Name is Power. You're the only answer to the dark 
You're the only right among the wrong. You're the only hope among the chaos. You are the voice that calls me on. Louder than every lie, my sword in every fight. The truth will chase us away. Jesus during his ministry was this, have you never read? Have you never read? Underneath that simple question is a life altering implication. You should read the word of God. That's why Jesus also says, man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And Jesus knows that there is a spiritual hunger inside of every human heart that can only be satisfied by consuming the words of God. Christian, give yourself to the Word of God. The Word of God is a rock, strong and steady. It doesn't budge, break, or crumble under pressure. It's an anchor in the storm, keeping us calm when everything around us is chaotic. The Word of God is a mirror showing us who we really are. You don't just read the Word of God, it reads you. It's a treasure, beautiful in every dimension and worth every effort of discovery. It brings endless joy and eternal riches to all who find it. It's a fire spreading across the world to bring heat and light. It's a river bringing 
life and power to everything it touches. The Word of God is a seed planted deep inside of our hearts, producing the fruit of holiness and righteousness. The Word of God is a sword, dividing true and false, right and wrong, good and evil. It's a hammer, crushing what needs to be crushed and breaking what needs to be broken. It's a lamp to our feet and a light to show us our path. So let the voice of God be the first, the last, and the loudest voice in your ear today, tomorrow, and for the rest of your life. Give yourself to the Word of God. So at this point, if um, any of the children want to go with Denise, uh, that would be great. Wonderful. Today's title and theme is Dwell. And I wonder what's dwelling and what's living in our lives. I wonder what we can say is in residence in our lives. I want to read to you um, a verse from Matthew. It's Matthew chapter 4 and verse 4. And I'm going to read it first of all from the NIV. And then I'm going to read it from the message version. Jesus answered, it is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. The message puts it this way. Jesus answered by quoting Deuteronomy. It takes more than bread to stay alive. It takes a steady stream of words from God's mouth. A steady, a steady stream of words from God's mouth. I was reading this story this week about a young mom who was talking about all the clutter that seemed to be accumulating on her dining room table. Does anybody relate to this? You know, is there a place at home where everything seems to be just left? You know, everybody comes through the door and everything's just piled in one place. And it's all right for a while, but it gets more and more and more. And she was talking about how life gets so cluttered and, and, and how her table got so cluttered. And she talked about how huge this table was, and yet it was useless because it was full of stuff. There was no, it takes up so much space in her dining room, but it just became a place where stuff gathered. Toys, mail, jackets, keys, much more got piled up on this table to the, to the extent that it couldn't be used for what the table needed to be used for. It was just a place for throwing things. It wasn't that place where we gather around and we sit around and we have a meal and we share together what's going on during that, that day. The table had become something it wasn't meant to be. It was never meant to be that place where everything was thrown. And we were making a comparison that this is very much like our lives. We seem to be always piling one thing after another on the tabletop of our lives. And before long, we have a life that's full of clutter, that's full of mess, that's just full of stuff. And it becomes so cluttered that there's little or no room for Jesus. Our lives become like that table, not fit for the purpose that we're supposed to be. Because there's no room. There's no room for God's word. There's no room for God. There's no space left for him to dwell in us. I love that word dwell. Because that's what God wants to do. He wants to dwell. He wants to take up residence in our lives. He wants to be there with us. Today's reading says that to stay alive, we need more than bread. To stay alive spiritually, we need the Word of God. We need God living in our lives. We need His Holy Spirit filling our lives. Instead of all the stuff that we just like to accumulate. You watch some of those shows on TV, you know, 
um, extreme hoarder or whatever it is, and you walk into these houses and you can't see any floor space, you can't see any furniture, you can't see any walls because everything's just piled up there. And the person will say, I don't know how it got out of such control. Because it all started off with one bit of clutter, didn't it? It started off with one bit of clutter and then the next thing's piled on, the next thing's piled on, and suddenly they're overtaken with us. And I think our lives can be like that at times as well. So I'm asking you today, have we room for Jesus? Have we room for God's word in our lives? Or is there just too much stuff in there? Are we pushing them into the corners of our lives? Because that doesn't work. We need to make room for him. We need to make room for his truths, for his promises that we find in his word. You know, what we really need is God to come in and <coughs> to flex his muscles and to get his arms and just go, Shh. all right, clear the table. He needs to clear the tabletop of our lives. He needs to say, get rid of all this stuff. Get rid of it. Put it in that trash bag and throw it out. Because then we can start to become fit for purpose. When that table is cleared of all the clutter, it can be what it's meant to be, a table. Isn't that right? So can our lives. We need, need Jesus to come and sweep clean our lives. That's what that mother needed for her table and for her home, probably for her sanity as well, to see where everything is. It's funny, we'll always leave things in, unless, well, I shouldn't say we all. I think that I'll leave stuff in places where I'll always find it, all right? And guess, guess what? I forget where I left it. I forget that that's the place that I've left it. And especially on my computer, I'll come up with all these wonderful names to call something, and I'll save it, and I'll say, yeah, that'll do in there. And then three or four months later, I need it again, and I think, what did I even call that? What clever name did I call it that I can't remember, so I can't find it, so it's useless? That's not the way God wants us to live our lives, my friends. He wants us to make space in our lives for Jesus to come in and to use us the way we are meant to be used. To become the people that we are meant to become. To find the purpose that God has for us. And what he has planned for us. And we find that in his word. We find that from reading his word daily. Oh, Keith, stop talking about reading the word daily. daily. Because I just having the time. Having the time. Do you realize what I have to do today? Yeah. I do. And I point my finger at me as much as I'm saying to you today. We need to find the time. We need, need, need to find that time just to be with God, just to read his word, and just to listen to him. What's filling our minds right now? Think about that. What's filling your mind right now? I wonder many of us are thinking, hmm, will the Chiefs win today? <laughs> it used to be we used to think, when will the Chiefs ever get beaten? <laughs> now, now we're sitting thinking, I hope we're going to win today. Maybe we're thinking, I wonder how long Keith's going to go on for the day because this game is starting a bit earlier. Um, or maybe we're thinking, should I go for brunch after this or should I have breakfast? Should I stop at McDonald's? What should I do? Maybe I should invite somebody to come for brunch with us. Oh, but if I do that, who's going to pay for that? Yeah. yeah. If I invite them, will they pay for it? Mm, yeah. And our minds start wondering we start to think about all these things that are going on and and and, and yet we're, we're here because we're in the house of God and we're here to listen to God but we have so much other stuff going on that's why at the start I say let's just take a moment and just 
declutter our minds for a minute. Because we all know what the schedule is tomorrow. God knows what our schedule is tomorrow. He just wants us to live in the now. He wants us to live for right now. Let's stop and let's empty our minds so that it can be full of the things of God. Wouldn't that be wonderful? To have our focus clearly on him. Now, I, I know you're sitting there going, Keith, that's an impossibility. I just, life has to go on. But life can go on with God in control of it. Life can go on with God as the focal point of our lives. He doesn't want us to just sit like vegetables. He doesn't want us just to sit and do nothing and just focus on him. He wants us to be active. But when we focus on him, when we start to read his word, when we discover our purpose, everything that we do then is part of what God is calling us to do. So I don't care what it is. If your focus is on God, if you start every day by thinking, all right, God, what am I going to do today? What's my purpose? What opportunities are you going to give me today to do something that would really please you? Then when we go about our daily duties and our daily jobs, God's in that, you know? God, God's in it. And, he, and we start to see the world through his eyes. We start to see what's going on. Are we ready to ask God to take control? That we can open his word and spend time in it. He needs to have a place in our thoughts, in our memories, in our conscience, and our affections. And when God takes up residence and dwells in all those places, people start to see our lives differently. They start to see Jesus through us. Joshua 1 and 8 says in, in the message, and don't for a minute let this book of the Revelation be out of mind. Ponder and meditate on a day and night, making sure you practice everything written in it. Then you'll get where you're going and then you'll succeed. Not brilliant, but we have, to, we have to ponder on it. How many of us lift the Bible and just, you know, sort of flick through it and say, hey, where, where should I stop? Where should, oh, that'll do. And you read two, two or three verses and then our phones ring and we're on the phone and we're gone. It says here we need to ponder. We need to meditate. We need to listen to what God is actually saying because he wants to speak to us. God's word is living word. That's the thing that, that is so amazing. You will, you will read the same passage at different stages of your life and God will speak in a different way for that very moment. When we start to really get into God's word, it sends us out in the right direction and we will succeed in life. So if we did a straw poll today and we asked people to raise their hand, so I always say this is our little bit of Christian aerobics, all right, where we raise our hand, all right? Presbyterians, I know we find that very hard because usually our hands don't go above the pew, but I'm going to ask you to do this, all right? Who wants to succeed in life? Hands up. Okay. Hallelujah. We all want to succeed in life, but we've got, with all the clutter that's in there, with all the mess that's in there, we have forgot what success looks like. We think that success is what the, word, what the world tells us. Success is what the word tells us, what God's word tells us. That's where we should be looking for our success. For who we were intended to be is found in the pages of God's word. That's what we should be striving for. If God's word is not a priority to you and to me, then we're missing out on knowing God's will and purpose for our lives. Don't rely on ourselves to get through. Tried that, done that, got the t-shirt, changed the t-shirt, put on another t-shirt. 
still th always thought I can sort it out. It's God that sorts it out. It's him whose promises are true. We can trust him who never changes. Hebrews 13 and 8 tells us, for Jesus doesn't change yesterday, today, tomorrow. I love this. He's always totally himself. Always totally himself. Jesus is the only one we can put our trust in and his word will never change. You know, the one thing I've heard over and over again through my ministry, whether it's been here, whether it's been back, back home in, in Ireland, the same thing keeps coming up and up. It doesn't matter what side of the ocean, it doesn't matter how many years have passed, the same thing steep, keeps coming up. Keith, it's so hard to read the Bible. It is so difficult, I just don't understand any of it. I just don't get it. I want to say something here, and please don't take it wrong. But my answer sometimes to that to some people is perhaps your relationship with God isn't right. And it isn't what it should be. Look, let me explain it this way. I had no real interest in football. Now, I'm talking your type of football, all right? Not the real football, which is soccer, but I'm talking about your football here, all right? I watched it a little bit at home, but we didn't watch it all that much because with the time difference, you had to sit up to three o'clock in the morning to watch American football. And then it lasted for <sighs> forever. So I had really not much interest in it. I knew a little bit about it because I just watched bits and pieces. But I didn't really get it. What's all the fuss about? Why every 30 seconds do they have to have a break? Why do they always have to have a rest and take players off the field? What's this all about? Now, since I've started, since I lived here, I've started to watch it more. So I've started to understand it more. And I love watching the Chiefs. All right? Usually. Usually. Not right, right now. I do an awful thing. He, Jennifer will tell you this. All right, I'll start to watch it, and they'll go 14-0 down, and I go, that's it. That's enough. And I hit the record button, and I watch another program. And then I sit most of the afternoon on my phone going, it's now 14-7. They're coming back. And I'll wait to the end, and then I'll flick through it. If they've won, if they haven't won, it goes in the trash. That's, that's the way that I, I deal with it. But I love watching my homes, usually. And when you start to really love a sp that sport, it takes on a new meaning. It takes on a completely new meaning because you have an interest in it. And it's the same with God's word. When we start to love God more, we start to get interested in his word more. Do you know what I'm saying? A bit like me in the football. When I started to love it, I started to understand it. When we start to love God more and more in our lives, we start to understand what he's trying to say to us. You'll want to get inside God's word and get that inside scoop of what's going to happen next, how he sees our life planning out. And it's so different from what the world will tell us. We live at a time when the, when the world believes that the word of God makes too many demands on our lives. God expects us to be in church on a Sunday. <laughs> we're happy to buy season tickets to many things, but we're not happy to buy season tickets a lot of times to, to be at church. Because it's so much, it's, there's just too many demands on us. Bless us, he wants us to pray every day. He wants us to read his word every day. He wants us to come to church. He wants us to do good things for people. Even those people that really annoy us. It's too, it's too much 
That's what the world says. We want that easy option. You know, we want, we, we want a God who's like a drive through God that we can drive up to the window and go, hi God, and drive, drive on. We're, we're not prepared anymore to wait in line. And I'm as big a culprit as anything. Do you know what annoys me the most? Going into a fast food place and it taking 15 minutes to get served. That's not fast food. When I, you know, when I drive up to that window, I expect, okay, here comes the bag. But I don't even trust what's in the bag. I have to look to make sure they got my order right. Because the number of times I've called, gone home and it's been wrong, and then you get into the and you drive back again, you go, this order's wrong, and they go throw it in the trash and you get your new one. And they look at you as if you have horns. And, you know, that, that's the type of God that we sort of want. You know, we'll, we'll just drive, drive up, we'll just pass by, we'll take something from them, hopefully it's okay, it fits into what we really like. If not, we'll just go back and say, God, this is not what I want, you know. Change it, could you change that, please? That's not what God wants, my friends. He wants us to wait for his direction. He wants us to wait for his timing. And his timing is perfect. John shared last week about a few, you know, a few months ago, him feeling that God was saying, John, your time is in from here, is coming to an end. And he goes, but they haven't even got a name for a new pastor. And three days later, God's timing was right. There was a new pastor. See, we have to wait. We have to be patient. Luke 6, 46 says, why are you always so polite with me? Always saying, yes, sir. And that's right, sir. But never doing a thing, I tell you. That struck a chord with me. That was me for so long in my, my life. Yes, God, I hear that. Yep, yes, yep, yes, Lord. But doing nothing with it. Just doing my own thing. You know what I mean? We know what God's saying one thing does and we nod in agreement and then we do the exact opposite. My friends, if there's one thing I've learned that's that every every word that comes from God is worth listening to. And it's for our benefit. And every word is true. It's perfect. It's holy. It lays out our salvation plan before us. It's full of promises to get us through the ups and downs of life. Every word is inspired and given by the Holy Spirit. It's a living word. It's our directory for life. And it brings life and it brings hope and it brings peace. That's why the Bible is still the best seller in the world. I read this great quote this week and it said, the Bible as it is, is for us just as we are. We don't have to be anything different. The Bible is written for us just as we are. The book is personal. It's from our Father in heaven. You know, when you think of the great authors and these famous authors that, you know, a new book will come out and they'll go on a book signing tour and people will line up for hours just to get their book signed and just to meet the author. We don't have to do that. Do you realize that? We don't wait for a special event to meet the author of the Bible because he's the only author who is always present when we read it. Think about that. Whoever your fam whatever famous author you can think about, you're not going to be able to have them with you when you read their, their book. God's with us every time we open the pages of Scripture. He's the only one who will always be present when we read it. I think that's an awesome quote. The Bible is our compass. 
it always points us in the right direction. The big question to finish, are we willing to go in that direction? Are we willing to listen? Are we willing to take God's word as his word and say, yes, Lord. Yes, I'm going to do that. That's the direction I'm going to go. Because we can't change unless we allow the change to happen within us. Stubborn Keith for years didn't want God to have control. I listened, I nodded, and I did something different. And my life was cluttered and it was a mess. But when I started to say, okay, God, I'm going to trust you, then life started to happen. How about you today? Will you change? Will you let God dwell and God's word dwell in your life? He won't come in to squat. All right? He won't barge his way in through the door. He wants to be invited in because he wants to dwell. He wants to be with us. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you that you are a God who doesn't barge in but waits to be asked. And we wonder how you can put up with us because we're pretty stubborn people. And Lord, today I ask that each of us will be willing to commit to reading your word, to listening to what you say, and then putting it into practice. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. As we finish today, please don't rush off. I'm, I'll be down at the back once we get settled here. Um, please have a coffee. If you're here for the first time, I have a gift I want to give to you. So don't rush off. Um, and as I tell you every week, you need to eat all the donut holes or I have to eat them on Monday. All right? So fill up and then you'll not have to invite somebody for brunch because you'll be too full before you go. And you'll have had something with all of us. Right? Okay, let's sing this last song. This is called How Can It Be?
how can it be? That's a question we do. How can it be that we are free? Well, we can learn that by opening God's word because on every page we will find freedom. We will find truth. And we'll find a God that loves us and who sets us free. Thanks for being with us. If you want to watch online at some stage, uh, that'll be up this afternoon. And those that watch online, we hope that you'll be blessed uh, through this. Now join us for some refreshments at the back. Have a great week.